Stromboli, one of the volcanic islands of the Aeolian archipelago in southern Italy, is famous among the volcanological community and around the world because of its persistent Strombolian activity occurring at the summit craters area. This relatively quiet activity every now and then is broken by eruptive crises characterized by effusive activity with the lava flowing down to a slope called by the Strombolian inhabitants Shara del Fuoco, slope of fire, and or violent explosions with bombs even reaching the two villages along the coast. The Istituto Nazionale di Geofisica e Volcanologia performs routine monitoring of the Stromboli volcano by using geochemical, geodetic and seismological networks. In the summer of 2002, the GPS network recorded small aerial deformations. Meanwhile, the geochemical stations registered an increase of CO2 in the water of the wells. In November, the GPS network recorded a new deformation and the CO2 in the wells was still at an anomalously high level. In December, the Strombolian activity was very intense. On the 28th, at 6.15 p.m., through a northeastward fracture, located 600 meters above the sea level on the Shara del Fuoco, the magma reached the surface and flowing down to the Shara del Fuoco in less than 30 minutes reached the sea. The day after, during the survey, we note that the flank of one of the craters collapsed and that the effusive activity stopped. At the basis of the Shara del Fuoco, we observed the presence of a hot avalanche deposit. On December the 30th, at 10.30 a.m., the lava flows from a series of vents opened along a new fracture on the Shara del Fuoco, almost perpendicular to the northeastward one. Almost five millions of cubic meters of the Shara del Fuoco slides down into the sea. Also, a submarine portion of the slope, almost 13 millions of cubic meters of material slides down. The landslides triggered a tsunami, which even reached the southern Tyrrhenian shores. On the Stromboli Island, the waves destroyed hotels and houses up to tens of meters away from the seashore. Since the beginning of the effusive activity, the Strombolian activity at the summit craters stopped. But the seismic signals, usually related to Strombolian explosions, were still recorded while the effusive activity was taking place. The normal Strombolian activity would start again only a few months later, when the effusive activity stopped. Because of this unusual behavior of the Stromboli volcano, and considering the risk of other collapses of the Shara del Fuoco, the Istituto Nazionale di Geofisica e Vulcanologia decides to improve its volcanological, geochemical, geodetic, and seismological network, sponsored by the Italian Civil Protection Service and supported by the volcanological guides of Stromboli, the pilots of the Air Valsa Company, the Guardia di Finanza Army and the firemen, the INGV staff improved the monitoring network all around the volcano. After the landslide, the fracture along the Shara del Fuoco is particularly active. Few vents open at 400 and 500 meters of elevation along this fracture. And every now and then, a vent opens also at 600 meters on the northeastward fracture. The lava is flowing down to the Shara del Fuoco, partially reaching the sea and partially forming a lava field in the landslide scarp.
we recorded minor ground deformations and important emission of gas from fractures in the crater's area. At the end of January, the vents emplaced along the northwest fracture are particularly active, and their emission rate is higher than that of the vents located on the fracture along the Chardo del Fuoco. All the vents, anyway, contribute to increase the lava field in the landslide scarp. Women of the world, take over. Because if you don't, the world will come to an end. And it won't take long. Women of the world, take over. Because if you don't, At the beginning of February, the vent at 600 meters stops its activity and the lava flows only through the vent at 500 meters of elevation on the fracture along the Chardo del Fuoco. Starting from February the 9th, the monitoring network records a series of variations, such as increase of the seismic activity, ground deformations, increase of the SO2 flux, increase of the CO2 contents in the wells, increase of the temperature at fumaroles located in the crater's area, and increase of the temperature in the craters. On February the 15th, the vents along the Chardo del Fuoco fracture stop their activity, and the lava starts to flow again from the vents at 600 meters of elevation along the northeastward fracture. But a few hours later, the lava stops flowing also from there. On February the 17th, at 600 meters of elevation, a new vent opens nearby the old ones. Starting from the beginning of March, along with the effusive activity, we also observe explosions with emission of ash from the summit craters. These ash emissions will accompany the effusive activity for a few weeks. In this period, the monitoring network records another series of anomalies, such as variations in the seismic events location, increase of the numbers and temperature of the fumaroles in the craters area, increase of the number of fractures in the craters area, decrease of pH of water in wells, thermal anomalies into the summit craters. And on April the 3rd, we observe an explosion with bombs falling outside the craters. Because of these anomalies, we reduce all the monitoring activities involving people in the craters area, and we assumed that something would have happened. Chiama per radio l'elicottero, per radio l'elicottero. Come va l'elicottero? Già avvisato. Actually, the paroxysm was anticipated by an anomalous seismic signal, but only a few tens of seconds before. During the paroxysm, we observed the emplacement of pyroclastic density currents, along with the emission of bombs and ash towards the southern side of the island and the village of Ginostra. Scoria, pumices, and also lithic bombs reached the village and destroyed some houses and constructions. Luckily, very few people were living in the island at that time, and nobody was injured. Unfortunately, most of the instruments positioned in the crater's area were destroyed.
couple of hours later, the lava is flowing again on the top of the pyroclastic products accumulated on the lava field in the landslide scarp. The 6th and 10th of April at night, the seismic network record two more signals comparable in shape and frequency, but not in amplitude to the anomalous signal of April the 5th. For security reasons, in the next days nobody worked in the crater's area, and we concentrated our efforts on mapping and sampling the fall deposits emplaced on the south slope of the volcano. On April the 14th, in agreement with the Italian Civil Protection Service and with the helicopter pilots, we decided to survey the crater's area and the lava field. Around the craters we found lithics up to a few meters large and scoria up to one meter large. All the crater area was covered by a scoria fall deposit up to 50 centimeters thick and the instruments were seriously damaged or destroyed. The lava field is covered by a pyroclastic density current, not outcropping in the crater's area. On the lava field, we now observed presence of hornitos and significant degassing. In the next weeks, even if at a reduced emission rate, the lava keeps flowing from old and new vents. In May, we observe new fractures and record deformation on the lava field. At the end of May, the scoria flow deposits outcropping on the lava field is completely covered by new lava flows. Meanwhile, we gradually replace all the instruments destroyed during the paroxysm. often observe ash emissions. In the next months, the lava emission rate is lower and lower.
July the 21st, the effusive activity stops and a few weeks later Stromboli goes back to its spectacular Strombolian activity.